All right, everyone, we just want to say welcome. Uh, we're glad that you've joined us and uh, we're excited to start lesson two of the Fantasy Home Festival. Uh, my name is Rob Heinrichs and uh, with me is Jen Whiffen. Hi there, everyone. And uh, yeah, we're really excited to bring you lesson two. Before we get, oh yeah, before we get started, I just wanted to make you aware that we have some other people who are helping us today. Uh, we have Dave Sands, Ilan Bowder, Nicole Cruz, and uh, James Gill, and they are here to answer your questions. They are helping us produce this lesson, so we're really thankful to have them along with us. Uh, we are going to start today by uh, again watching a short video. Uh, last week, we uh, encourage you to start building your first floor and tracking your supplies. And, uh, and we also encourage you to take some pictures of your houses as they're coming along. So we are going to show you some of those builds now. Well, hello everyone and we are back. We are so happy to be here doing lesson two. Today we're going to start off with some examples from students uh, working on our project. We're going to start off first with Kiana from Blakeburn. Kiana has a stylish house with a pool, a rink, an entertainment room, plus the standard rooms of a bedroom, a bathroom, and a kitchen. And she also has some beautiful gardens. All right, next up, we're going to give a shout out to Satayesh from the Portland River. Satayesh has created a beautiful house, with a bedroom, pool, gardens, a friendly pig, and a herd of cats. All right, finally, we have Carter from Maple Creek. Carter has done an outstanding job. He has given us an aerial view of his floor plan and also included the paper floor plan. Well, these guys have done an outstanding job. Let's give them a round of applause. All right, let's get ready for lesson two. All right, well. Just sorry to interrupt. Are you able to confirm that, is, that you're getting sound? Can anybody post in the Q&A and tell us that you are hearing anything? And by anything, are you talking about the video sound? I don't know. Okay. I got one question that they couldn't hear, so I'm just checking if our um, attendees can hear. Okay. Oh, I've got a few people that have responded that said they are getting sound. Okay, that's good. Go ahead. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. All right, so we are going to continue. So today we have the following learning intentions. So first of all, in the numeracy section, we are going to be focusing on the cost of supplies and how we are going to approach the weekly check-in. So we're going to be checking in, uh, our teachers are gonna be checking in with students and we wanna make sure that we're staying on the right track. And so Jen is gonna talk about both of those things. And then we're gonna get into some Minecraft, building a second floor, how we can do it quickly, uh, some tips and tricks for you about things like stairs and ladders and lighting. And finally, how to use the book and quill to demonstrate your learning along the way. All right, Jen, I'll hand it over to you now. 
OK, great. So now the cost of Minecraft supplies. Oh, my cost of Minecraft supplies is something that we does not come in Minecraft. We have to do some work on our own and I'm going to play this little. This is just a tiny little clip of when I went into Minecraft and you know, as you probably know, if you watched this last time, I'm really new to Minecraft and I made the discovery that it is a place where you can find pretty much any material um, are some really unusual materials that you find on the earth. So not just standard stuff like rocks and wood and, and concrete, but you can find like rare minerals and gold and diamonds. And and uh, I mean, I even found a stone called uh, lapis lazuli, which I found um, intriguing. And I asked the question, what is this stuff? And I and I wondered how on earth you could figure out the cost of such a thing. Um, the teachers and students, you t all together are going to be trying to figure out when you use a material, how much in the real world this material, it, it, how much it would actually cost, right? So um, I'm going to lead you through some steps for how you go about doing this. So if you could forward to the next slide. OK, now there's a couple of pages that you might receive depending on the page that your teacher uh, decides is best for the class. So you might see one that looks like this where the blocks in Minecraft, any type you just give them the same price and you would what you would do with this. Uh, there is a spot for stairs and glass and fence walls and doors and you have to just kind of imagine what price might be fair and you want to engage in a discussion as a class around this. It doesn't involve a lot of problem solving. It doesn't necessarily involve a lot of comparison, but but it can. And I want to show you the next page as well because there's another one that you could take a look at. This one goes into what if you think that the block should be worth different amounts and like me personally, once I started getting into it, I realized that the blocks should not, in my opinion, be worth the same amount because you have ones that are really basic, like dirt blocks, for example, and then you have other stuff that just it should be should be really expensive. Like I say, like diamond blocks compared to concrete blocks or you know wood blocks. And what we need to do to investigate the price of blocks is we need to have some hints around how much those things cost in the real world. So I'm going to get again if you could click forward. And in order to do this, well, you're going to have to do a little bit of research, some problem solving and then have some discussion and debate as a class. And the first thing you need to do, like all the links that you're going to find to help you with this task are at the Fantasy Home website. You're going to find uh, links for your research and you're going to find a video that I created where I went through how it was I um, I discovered clues for the cost of materials and then I set up some questions for you that you can problem solve as a class. So um, Rob, do you mind going into or Mr. Heinrichs, I should say because we're kind of oh, teachers no. here. <laughs> and so if you could go to the website, that would be awesome. We can take a look to see how it's set up. There we go. OK. It's just slow. OK, so when we get there, what you're going to notice, there we go. So there is lesson one and lesson two. That's this relates to our webinars that we're hosting right now. Uh, and the video that you want to preview for sure, it could just to, it's it's just an interesting exploration no matter what grade level you're in and how expensive a Minecraft block could be. And then I use three samples. I look at wood, concrete and lapis lazuli. And the other things that you can do, and I'll, I'll let you explore that video on your own. You might want to watch it in your classroom or uh, or watch it at home. And if you scroll down there, Mr. Heinrichs, then we have also links for you to explore for the other materials. So um, some places that you might find doors, fancy materials, carpet, windows, slabs, just to give you a basic idea how much they cost in the real world. Those ones won't involve as much problem solving, but there are different prices for different brands and for different sizes, and you're going to have to take a look at that to decide what might compare to what you've got in Minecraft. But those links are available for you to use. And uh, if we could go back to PowerPoint, because we're not going to deal with the weekly, uh, the, the weekly check ins quite yet. The most important part, though, is that when you finish your research, that you make sure that you have some really good discussion and some debate. Um, and 
I would recommend that you take the materials and then you put them in order from what you think are going to be the most valuable ones to the least valuable ones and then make your argument for the cost that those should be and then vote on it as a class. Like what should the cost of those materials be? Um, and consider too that the more complicated you make the numbers for the pricing, like for example, if you decide like $1,682.52 for a block, know that you're going to have to deal with that complicated number when in the weekly checkups and you're going to have to do some multiplying or adding or you know you have to be comfortable with those big numbers so you may even personally want to make a case for rounding those numbers to something that's a little friendlier to deal with and we can move to the next slide just before you do that though i'm thinking of my son who's in grade five and he's doing this and they're studying decimals right now it might yeah. be good for them to use decimals ben yeah, i'm I sorry i'm sorry ben yeah <laughs> i gotta put that out there it is good for you to use decimals definitely and i mean if you're in grade six seven push yourself to do it push yourself to do it because it'll give you that practice that you need um, and you know that your teacher is part of the debate, right? They're, they get to go in there and have their opinion too. And you know, if you think that, you know, like $10 is perfect because that's easy to deal with, my hunch is that they're going to push you to something that's a little more challenging. All right. So now we're going to move into Minecraft. We're going to do a little bit of building and some exploring in Minecraft, and then we'll come back out and talk about our weekly check-ins. And Mr. Heinrichs this time is going to go in before I do because we felt like for this, I, I'm so new and so darn slow at this that he's going to invite me. So you're going to see things from his perspective. So I got to get into Minecraft too, don't I? How does mm -hmm. this work? All right, so my world is just loading up here and oh, here we go. There we go. Oh, it's good to have the ground. All right, and then I'm going to Miss Whiffen, I'm going to join as uh, have you join. So the code okay. today is water bucket, water bucket, water sign. bucket, uh, sign. Yep. Rail okay. rail. Water bucket. Water bucket. OK. Yep, confirmed. OK. All right. So here we are. We're at the house from last time, and you can see that it has it has grown a little bit. We've changed it a little bit. Um, and what I've started doing, I'm just going to fly up here, is I've started putting on the second floor. And what I wanted to show you first was how you can quickly build the second floor. Because, oh, there you are, Jen. There are you. So to build this quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go to one of the end walls here. And I'm going to, now I'm using a mouse. So it, to build quickly, I find using a mouse easier. If you're using a touchscreen uh, machine, you can probably build pretty quickly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go above and I'm hovering above and I'm going to be pressing S and moving backwards as I build. So OK, whoa, 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 Mr. Herricks, can I uh, do I have so I have to fly up to do this? OK, yeah, yeah. so you're going to have to come over here and fly, but I'm going to do this and I'm going to build like this. Whoa, okay. and you can see so, that goes then, pretty quick. You just lay down the blocks like you normally would. It'll just still just sort of float up there like that. Yeah, because I'm actually building them connected to one another. OK, so OK. Do that. Oh. oh, you're in my way. I'm going to try. Oh, I, I know right I'm in your way. I'm sorry. But do I do it? Will it just float? Oh, yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. OK. OK. I don't know what I'm doing now. How come it won't lay down blocks when I'm right you're there? Too Is low. it because I'm too close? You're too low. You got to go higher. Press the okay. space. OK, so there you go. If they're not being they're not behaving themselves because you're too low, but I'm still yeah. it's still not doing anything for me. I wonder if oh. I'm not in the right spot.
Well, I did do it, but now it's not working any, anymore for me. Yeah, I'm flying through you here. There yeah, we go. <laughs> now it's just telling me to mine. It's not. Am I still too low? You have the block in your hand. Uh oh, right. I don't have a block in my hand. Okay, that makes sense. That's usually helpful. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm gonna try now. I can at least successfully lay down one one block. I beat you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's nice you having need, you. I do partner. need you to build over here above the door. There's a section here. You could do that part for me. Okay, so right here? I am, yeah, I... right there above the door. Yeah, there you go. Okay, That's so but when you, if you want to just do it floating into, into space, though, it will do that for you? Well, you have to connect it to something. Okay. You can then break it, whatever's underneath, and in the creative world, it will uh, float. Okay. okay. So that, that was just a little bit of how oh, to yeah, build it. quickly. Um, let's put that door in there. All right, and now I'm going to show you how to build some stairs. So I want to build stairs right here, and there's lots of different materials you can use for stairs. I'm going to use the wood slabs that are the same as the wooden floor here because it's a modern house and I like to keep things pretty like traditional, like, you know, don't have too many different materials. I want to go up to the second floor, so I need to break the area where my stairs are going to go. See, I love that about Minecraft that you don't have to plan for the spaces. You can just like bust a hole wherever you need to do it. No. Wish, yeah, I wish building in the real world was a little bit more like that, right? Yes. Sorry. So now I'm just going to back out here. You can see I put the block in the wrong space there. I need to put it. These wood planks are half a brick. So I need to make sure that I'm putting them in the right spot. Half so, of a brick. Is that a slab? It's a slab, yeah. When they're half like that? Yeah. Okay. I and thought there so, were actual stairs in Minecraft too, though. But I, I mean, it makes sense that you build them out of... Yes, so I I've actually, that. I'm rebuilding here because it didn't line up or it, it stuck too far out in the room. Yeah. yeah, so I need to make sure. Oops, all right, making myself a little dizzy here. Oh, that one didn't seem to. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to go up the stairs here. Wait for me, I'm going to come to you. So when you build it though, oops, they have to be connected to the wall. Otherwise you can't build them. Is that right? Yeah, initially you could have floating stairs if you wanted to, but you need something to connect them to beforehand and then you could take that something away. Okay, this is a big open space. Do we need the whole space like that? Well, we don't necessarily, but we do, we do want to make sure we give space for our heads to poke through. Okay, so if I put one down here, would you still yeah. be able to get up? Ah, I would, yeah. Okay, how about that? Is that too tight? Yeah, then too I, tight. no, that's oh, oh, too sorry. tight. Sorry, too tight, that's okay. Is that better? Yeah. All right, oh, and now I feel not... like I'm going to fall, so uh, could I put up if some railing? Minecraft, you don't die. It's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> OK, but I'm going to put up some railing or I thought I was going to put up some railing. What is that? OK, so as oh, you're go. doing that, I'm just going to show. So in Minecraft, you do actually have some blocks that if you type in stair, they actually look like a stair. So I could have used these blocks instead. And if I put one here, oops. I need to switch. You can see it looks like a stair. I didn't like that look, so that's oh. why I went with the slab. Okay, hold on. I got. I got to check it out. So there were. All right. So it's just a matter of the way you like it to look. Then. Okay, yeah. I agree. The slab looks nice. The slab looks nice. Yeah. I like the more open look. Okay. So the other thing that we want to uh, show you is. Oh, I've already got it is how you might build a ladder. So I'm going to go over here to a different part of my house uh -uh. and I'm going to build a ladder to the top. 
And if you go into your inventory and press uh, type ladder, you'll see this. And most of you who have uh, played Minecraft have used a lot of ladders before. And the great thing is then I can just climb up and there I go. I'm, I can climb up to the top from using the ladder. And it requires You're very little Rob, force. Are you? Uh, okay, hold on. Jen, I'll come to you. Okay. I think I just, oh, that I see it now. Oh, wow, okay. Ladder, yeah. Went around the whole house, there you are, yeah. So to climb up the ladder, all you have to do is push and then keep going straight and you'll climb up the ladder. It takes a little bit of okay. practice. Okay, okay, yeah, um, my screen just went black, so I just have to wait for it to kind of come back up again, I think. Okay. You go ahead. Are we are we done that yep. now? Okay. Well, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show one more thing. Oops. Okay. Here we go. And go down All the right. stairs. Oh, nice glass uh, railing. Railing? Really? Yeah, I, I I thought that was pretty smart. I, it was just taking me forever, of course, as usual. These things do take time, the, right? The other thing that you may want to put in your house is some lighting because as you build the ceiling, it gets dark in the house. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually put in this glowstone. Oops, wrong spot. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to put some glowstone in the different rooms of my house. Now you'll see it that I'm replacing the ceiling actually with glowstone oh. in places see, because I like the flush. I, well, yeah, it, it looks really nice. Yeah, I mean, you could decorate. You could have like really funky furniture made out of glowstone and like I imagine that as a base for a table with like a glass top and something really modern. Yeah, okay. and as we, very, pretty as nice. We I, I just in, don't know what glowstone is. It is uh, I don't nice. know either. OK, do you know I, I um, I'm noticing one thing that I didn't imagine for my house and that is that there is like a ceiling over the courtyard. And I kind of wanted it to be like exposed to the sun. So we have to, I think we, I have to look at the design. And oh, you see like that, that is, big center space. Like I know that it's not very efficient use of space, but I really wanted to see the sun. So oh. we need to have some of those blocks removed. And, and I had to get out of Minecraft actually, because my, it, I, everything was just black and I couldn't see where I was anymore. Can I show you what I did on, so way over here we have uh, a house that is, virtually the same okay and this one actually has exactly what you want so uh, yeah. you've got the stairs oh, the stairs yeah. come up here yeah and right beside the stairs actually is a wall and then that's glass. the courtyard right there yeah that's nice that's nice yeah so we've okay. got a glass roof on there and i would actually think that it would be a good idea for us to put some windows in here as well yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Because then, you know, your interior rooms, when we build them, then we'll have some nice light. Because I, I think the bedrooms and everything will go upstairs. That's my thinking. So, yeah. All right. So, the last thing that I would like to show everyone is something called the book and quilt. So, I'm just going to fly here for a moment so I can have a nice view of this house as it's coming along. And I'm going to go into my inventory again by pressing E. So it's actually my equipment. And I'm going to type in book. And you can see I've got a book and quill here. And, oops. And then I'm going to type camera again. And I'm going to take the, the camera as well. And so what I can do to document my learning is I can do a little bit of more writing in the book and quill. So when I go into the book and quill, when I right click with the book in my hand, it gives me a page where I can do some writing. So I could say, uh, you know, first floor is finished. Here's a picture in the entrance. And then uh, what I can do then is I can click out of it and click on my camera, take a picture, there's a picture, go back 
into the book and quill. And on this side, by clicking the pencil and then the little picture icon, oh, okay. I can choose my picture and I nice. can put it in there. And I could do a bit more writing. I could actually talk about how much uh, some of the different blocks cost or how many blocks I used, um, maybe some of the changes that I had to make to my floor plan. Mm -hmm. And so the wonderful thing about this is that this book can have multiple pages. Now, this button down here, this sign button, you do not want to press that sign button until the very, very end, because if you sign the book, it actually locks it and closes it so that uh, you can't edit it anymore. You could look at it, but you can't add to it. So this is something that you want to do at the very end. And this might be something that your teacher says, uh, we're going to do a book and quill and we want you I want you to take you know so many pictures and write a paragraph for each picture describing the different parts of your house and then as you as you finish it you would sign it so I'll give you an example now I would sign this and notice it says right away it says note when you sign the book it will no longer be editable so I can give it a title and my name is already on it so I can just say fantasy home if I want to and it will include my name and when I press sign and close here there it is now you notice it's glowing now that means that it's finished once I'm done with it I can export it and just like last time right I can make sure that I can save this in a good spot so I have a fantasy home folder in my OneDrive I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to save it. And then when I'm ready, I can send that to my teacher. I can send it via email or Teams or upload it to FreshGrade. All right. Uh, we're going to stop uh, Minecraft now and we're going to head back into, uh, into the PowerPoint and Jen is going to talk about our weekly check-ins. Okay. And my computer's been acting a bit funny. It just kicked me out of Teams. I think I'm back in. Okay. <laughs> you can hear me okay, Rob? <laughs> I can hear you, yeah. Okay, okay that's, that's good. So it's probably okay. okay. All right, so now for weekly check-ins. Weekly check-ins are um, a way of keeping track of how many supplies you've used and how much it's cost you so far without getting overwhelmed by doing all the math at the end and it's a way to for you to get some feedback from your teacher to see whether or not you've done it the right way so because you're going to do the same thing next week right and uh, you're going to update it and any kind of mistakes you made in the first one you can correct it in the second one and then the nice thing is you get a chance to learn uh, the right way to do things so in order to do the weekly check-in you're going to need your minecraft supply sheet uh, the tracking sheet that i showed you last time and uh, you're also going to need the pricing sheet whatever you have to have that done first before you go to do your weekly check-in okay so next slide and there are three levels of weekly check-in and this can be um, uh, associated with different grades because we have uh, students in here there's a youngest grade three but it doesn't have to be it can also be uh, an option if you are not comfortable with some of the more complicated numbers as you get older anyway so um, minecraft weekly check-in one looks a little bit like this where you just have to report out on the types of supplies that you've used so far and notice that i've put down how many cement blocks versus how many i had used some lapis Rob, I noticed that you didn't keep the lapis pillars that I put in to the house, oh even though they, they were really fancy. But anyways, OK, and then I uh, have windows as well. How many windows, how many doors? And then simply in the second question, coming up with a total of supplies, right? So you're doing a little bit of adding uh, option two. So if you forward to option two, option two is a little harder because First question exactly the same, how many materials? And then second question is the cost of each of those materials. And so you can see what I decided as the price of my materials. So I had cement blocks, 
I was pretty random when I did this. I have to tell you, I, I just thought, well, I, I'm going to give it a price because I want to show you a sample. So cement blocks priced at $100 each. I used 264 of them. So I did some multiplication in this case. That's not the only way you can do it, but I but it's fastest for me. So uh, I knew that 264 times 100 got me to 26,400. That's a lot, by the way. Um, and then uh, my lapis blocks, a million dollars each. I'm telling you, these columns are really nice. And that's eight million dollars for my columns. Probably why Rob thought they were not a uh, good option. But anyways, OK, and then and then we have our windows, doors, slabs, and I just I put all the pricing down. So that's option two, a bit more math involved in that. Move on to option three. Option three involves more complex math and Instead of just describing the numbers of supplies, you have to know something about fractions and percents. And notice that I first had a sense for how many supplies I used in total because I had to know what my denominator was. So 400 different supply items in total was where I ended up. That's a nice number. I probably rounded that slightly. Um, <laughs> and then after that, I could do, I could figure out the fraction for cement blocks and then convert that into percentages. I did the same thing with all the materials. These are middle school level um, skills, but not to say that a grade four or five student, if they know something about fractions and percents, you certainly could take this on as a challenge, but it is challenging and, and is certainly not expected for grades three, four, five. It is definitely more grade seven. Definitely more grade seven. Uh, and then Rob, if you go to the next page, the final task for all three is asking you, there's like one question at the bottom where it says estimate and describe how much of your house is done. And you're, I'm challenging you use some numbers in this and it's very small and it's based on an estimate, but here's how it can sound. So in the in Minecraft, uh, so the weekly check in one and two, it just says estimate and describe how much is done. So I said my first floor is done. I have one more floor to four floor to go plus the roof. So I'm listing off the things I still have to do. This helps me, by the way, imagine how much more, right? I also want to build a swimming pool and a chicken coop. And so I estimated I'm not halfway done. I thought I was a little long. I think I'm about a third of the way done. That was that was my estimate, right? So you have to sort of think Am I if you're if you're not if you're not super comfortable with fractions, half is your is your kind of your your benchmark and you have to think, am I more than half done or less than half done? And what is a fraction that is less than half done? And what might be a fraction that's more than half done if you are farther along than that? Now, if you are in middle school, you can add percentages to the mix. These are very comfortable for doing estimation. So it says instead my first floor is done and I still have the second floor roof, swim pool, chicken coop and garden to go. So I'm about a quarter of the way or 25, 25% finished. I think I also need to decorate. OK, so I adjust it. Maybe I'm 20% finished, so I have 80% to go, right? So it's it's simple, but it helps to it helps to frame your thinking and you're going to use that language of fractions or percentages or both. And that's it. That that's the weekly check in. Oh, and before you when you finish it, take a snapshot of the house so far and you can do that using the options that Rob talked about, right? Just use the camera tool that's inside of Minecraft. Uh, and then if you're using FreshGrade, upload it to FreshGrade. If you're using Teams, pop it into Teams and then you have to uh, type a quick comment. What would you like the adults to notice about your floor, uh, your floor, your house so far? So something that you're kind of proud of so far, uh, something you worked really hard at. Um, and just put that out there so that when your teacher takes a look, they can take a look at your comment, recognize the work that you put into it, and then maybe even give you a tiny bit of advice, right, to help kind of push it forward a little bit. And that's it. Awesome. Thanks, Jen. So just before I talk about lesson three, I just want to put it out there that uh, I was so impressed by the work that um, those students uh, from the different schools sent to me. And so I'm encouraging any of you uh, who are building to take some pictures. They don't have to be pictures uh, in using the camera in Minecraft. You can take a screenshot or even a video if you're if you know how to do that. <coughs> Pardon me. You can send those 
uh, to your teacher and they could forward them on to me or you can send them directly to me. Um, I sent out an email to all of you who uh, were attending in the last week and I'll do that again this week uh, asking for your your uh, submissions. Uh, it will go to your SD43 email so you have to check that if you want to send it in. Next week uh, in the numeracy section we're going to be looking at graphing uh, the supplies that we've we've uh, used so using bar graphs and circle graphs and then we're going to do some wrap up tasks and we're also going to look again at how to export and share and then uh, how you can submit your house uh, to us um, so that we can make a really cool video to share with all of you. Remember that uh, next week's lesson is uh, on Tuesday at the same time, 11 o'clock, that's June 16th. And the link is the same as today, except we just changed the number from two to three. And uh, yeah, we just want to say thank you. And uh, we're, we're so excited that you've joined us. And uh, we're, yeah, we're hoping that uh, you'll join us next week. Thank you okay, so much. Bye-bye, everyone.